subscribe to the channels. Burn it down with Kim Brown. We're here every Tuesday, Friday, 7 in the p.m. Eastern time. So cops ain't shit has been a reoccurring theme on this platform, and it's well-deserved. In addition to relentlessly and senselessly murdering, murdering black people in this country, brown folks in this country, the police continue to remind us that they are, in fact, an occupying force there to serve the interests of the elites. And if it requires violating the pesky constitutional and civil rights of its citizenry, well, fuck it. No big deal. You know, that's the cost of business. Will, if you could, cue up that Cerise Castle TikTok for me. So you guys are familiar with Cerise Castle. Cerise Castle is an independent journalist out of Los Angeles. A couple of years ago, Cerise formulated the series, A History of Violence, detailing the Los Angeles Sheriff's Deputy Gangs, in which there are numerous gangs that have been in effect for many, many decades, operating and behaving as gangs <laughs> and terrorizing the community, including murdering people. And now it has been documented for a fact that LASD was, in fact, not only surveilling and creating dossiers on journalists like Cerise and organizers like Richie Serjenko of the People's City Council, uh, they was getting deep with the shit, Shawty. They wasn't, they wasn't bullshitting about it. They said, we're going to channel the spirit of J. Edgar Hoover and make sure uh, that we are taking down these pesky folks out here exercising their First Amendment rights. What's First Amendment rights in America? Let's be serious. Anyway, um, Cerise Castle dropped this on her TikTok. And um, yeah, check this shit out. County Sheriff's Department started monitoring me after I wrote right, the history it back of from the beginning, gangs. my bro. That's a the LA County Sheriff's Department started monitoring me after I wrote the history of deputy gangs. That's according to about 800 pages of emails they had to give me after I sued them for those records. That included direction to monitor my social media accounts, a crime report identifying me as a suspicious person and my information being sent to the department unit responsible for monitoring license plates. This also wasn't limited to me. Several accounts that promoted my work online were also marked for monitoring. LASD created a 29 page dossier on at least one activist who promoted my work, which included he and his family and his roommates, social security numbers, home addresses, and personal phone numbers. The sheriff's department said in a statement that, quote, we are not monitoring your social media accounts. But in that same statement, they also said that, quote, in order for us to best serve our community, our employees read news articles and social media posts from various sources. They also just didn't respond to questions about the specifics of what is in these emails. I also want to mention that since I've reported on deputy gangs, I've received numerous death threats like this one. Quick content warning, this threat is very explicit. I've always wondered if these were connected to the department and these emails seem to suggest that it is. What do you think? Let me know in the comments and check out the full story on Los Angeles Public Press. Cerise Castle, everybody. Um, I'd like to welcome back to Burn It Down with Kim Brown, Richie Serjenko from the People's City Council. And I believe Richie was an activist Cerise just referenced in her video about an organizer having a 29 page dossier detailing very personal details about them. Richie. Hey. How's it going? Uh, I'm, I'm doing all right. It's been a busy few weeks, um, but thank you for having, having me on. And uh, it's good to see you. It's been, it's been a while, but you know, we go, we actually, I don't know if viewers know, but you and I go way back. Like it's been a long time. It's been a few years out here, Richie, because you have been very actively and vocally with the shits in Los Angeles versus the pigs ver versus the Zionists ver versus uh, um, our, our enemies. <laughs> and I appreciate you for that. But of course, you know, even in spite of you being white and male, this kind of work does not come without consequence. So tell us what 
was revealed about what the Los Angeles sheriff's deputies in the ways that they have been surveilling you, monitoring you, harassing you, in, in, attempting to intimidate you because of the work that you do out there in the streets and also the, the activist political education that People City Council social media does online. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, first, obviously, shout out in solidarity to Sarif, who has, you know, uh, been reporting on LESD gangs uh, and, you know, wrote the traditional violence series, as you mentioned. Um, and so Sarif uh, received, you know, hundreds of pages of documents in a, a public records lawsuit that she had to sue the sheriffs for. Um, and the, the documents detail, you know, the harassment and intimidation that Cerise was facing, um, but also included in that was the 29 page dossier on, on myself. Um, and, you know, it had, like you said in the video, it had, um, you know, my phone number, my address, my social security number, um, you know, family members, their, their information, my roommates, they, they were looking into my boss and um, my, my girlfriend at the time. And, um, any public uh, information they gather, but also they were using, you know, other investigatory techniques. And, um, you know, we can get into it, but this, you know, just, just for everyone knowing, this is was the very beginning of the harassment that I was facing uh, from Alex Villanueva. Um, and so there, there are plenty more documents um, because this was uh, June, 2021, and the harassment would continue until November, 2022. Um, and, you know, I face other types of repression and harassment surveillance now, but as far as the um, harassment from LASD and having LASD outside my house and, and things like that, um, that went through November 2022 when Villanueva, um, you know, he was, he was running ads on Facebook with uh, my name and face in it, um, but he lost, you know, and... Um, it, it comes with the territory, right? It, as you said, you know, being being a white male, um, but like, you know, when you are a race traitor, as all uh, white people should be, when like, when you do push back and, you know, openly confront these systems, which, you know, there are very few white heroes to have, but, you know, the only white person that, I, you know, look up to John Brown, right? And I'm not saying to the extent that uh, 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 John Brown, but as far as like, if you look at what he was saying um, in regards to what was happening during his time, just like how could any white person operate? And it's similar now, right? And, and the police uh, operate in, in the same way. And so, yeah, thank you for having me on and discussing this. And also for viewers to know, uh, I was on your show two days after the date referenced in this story. <laughs> Which is wild. Hold on, Richie. We have your 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 audio is a little garbled. I don't know if you're holding oh. your phone or what, but I want to be able to hear you very clearly. And just just for, for clarity for the audience, uh, when Richie speaks of Alex Villanueva, Alex Villanueva is the former. Um, sheriff of Los Angeles County, and he's not the sheriff anymore because he lost his reelection bid. So if, if I'm understanding you correctly here, Richie, after no Villanueva was defeated uh, at the polls, you noticed a, a difference. It, it, yeah, the harassment changed a little bit, or maybe the surveillance wasn't quite as intense. And yes, I'm I'm here for you getting into the details because uh, imagine my surprise when you when you sent me my own video with you joining me and, and you telling us now that they started really getting on you um, and, and you showed up on my show a couple of days after the fact. So uh, let me tell you something. I take a little bit of pride in knowing that <laughs> these are the kind of guests that are welcome on my platform. First of all, we love white race traders. You need to get a shirt that says that shit, Richie. You, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like white race. Sure. And you're going to get high fives from a lot of folks. But um, let, let's get into what is in the 29 page dossier. We're, let, let, let's start there. Go ahead. Yeah. So 
it began and you can hear me better now mm -hmm. yep okay uh, cool um so it began with like uh, you know, they were monitoring Cerise and they were monitoring who was sharing her work. Um, obviously, you know, Google LASD gangs. Um, and, you know, I referenced that a lot. Um, and at the time, Villanueva was doing a stunt where he was going to Venice Beach and saying that he was going to clear the boardwalk of the un unhoused people that live there with no other plan other than just removing poor people from public sight. Um and you know as things happened you know i had gone down there and, and bird dogged him in front of the in front of the cameras um and, and um you know and, and we it was glorious out it was glorious yeah. by the way <laughs> it was glorious yeah. and you really pissed him off he was big mad at you he was big mad that's why he sent his goons after me um and um but you know i also want to say like in my activism, my organizing work, I understand what like the sheriffs do. And um, I know I'm speaking about it now, but the families of uh, that are of their loved ones have been killed by LASD and LASD gangs. The sheriffs actually harass them like substantially more than me, like the Vargas family, the family of Anthony Vargas in East Los Angeles, like they get trailed daily um, by the sheriff's department. They get, you know, sheriffs showing up at their house and, and that has, harassment has continued, right? It, it stopped with me. Um, I just want to say that just so like people understand, like this is a much broader thing than like just what we're discussing. But, you know, as I, as I, decided to go after Alex Villanueva, I knew that this was potentially something that could happen. And um, so I wasn't surprised when Cerise sent me these documents, right? And so it began with, um, after this Venice Beach situation, um, someone, some higher ups in the sheriff's department had asked to create a profile on me. And um, someone responded, oh, we already have one. Um, and then this dossier, this 29 page dossier with, you know, my home address, uh, you know, my number, wait, wait, type Richie, car Richie, I have. Richie, hold that, hold that thought real quick, because I have a question here. When, as you're perusing the documents and they're saying that they want to create a profile on you, you know, we already have one, right? Is it because you're a criminal? <laughs> like, do they suspect no. you of crime? Are you trafficking coke out here? Like, what the fuck? Like, I you have to, I mean, I know the reasons, but I'm just curious what the reasons they may have used to justify it to themselves, if 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 not to try to pursue you for something criminally. Literally, they wanted to monitor you only because of your speech, only because of you actively with with zeal <laughs> doing constitutionally protected activities like you can yell at the fucking sheriff fuck that motherfucker yeah. you can yell yeah. at his ass in public absolutely so what yeah, did they I mean, say to justify your, oh, your your profile creation uh literally in in the profile and um you know i'll, I'll text it over to you um it says like subject is known for bird dogging uh people for attention and so bird dogging is like you know just as as if you've seen me do it before just you know aggressively asking questions of public officials and so yes that's first amendment protected activity um and that that's why they were investigating me so yeah this is uh this is what our resources are used for um and so that email between LASD top brass was sent around on June 16th, the morning of June 16th. That night, June 16th, I received a text from a, a, a random number uh, with uh, a relative's name and address that, that she lives at. Um, and then the following day, I went out to my car for um, to get like to just get something out of my car around lunchtime. And I see LASD outside my house. And that was the first time that they had let me see them. Um, and I had known I'd been being surveilled prior to that, but that was the first time I, like they had been so bold to like, you know, they weren't hiding anymore. Um, and so that, and so all that happened without me knowing about these documents. 
Um, and it, but at the time I did document what was happening. You know, I, I, I sent emails to the civilian oversight commission. I, I had texted people about it. Um, and then the next day, uh, I came on your show and, and, you know, a question you asked me was like, you know, do you want to talk about the harassment that you're facing? And, um, you know, again, like, I didn't want to at that time, I didn't want to come on and be like, yeah, no, like I got the sheriffs outside my house and, and all of that. But it was just good to have for the archive because now I can go back and send it to you and be like, hey, remember when I came on the show and we talked about this? These documents are corresponding, you know, but that also shows how quickly it works with the cops, right? That Alex Villanueva can say, oh, this is a target. Um, let's get info on him. And then the next day I got, I have them outside my house and, and th that's how it works. It's really disgusting because even in the examples that you just gave in which the Los Angeles sheriff's deputies use their resources to clear unhoused from Venice beach, to trail and target and create profiles on law abiding by and large, you know, um, citizens and organizers like yourself to, to target and trail journalists like Cerise Castle. I mean, this is what the police spend their money on y'all. This is what the training is for. Oh, and to shoot and kill people and to terrorize the community. And I appreciate you, Ricky for, uh, Richie, I'm sorry. We have Ricky's okay. and Ricky, Richie's all around here, but Richie for highlighting and making sure that we understand that there are folks out here experiencing this harassment and intimidation and worse who have it harder than you, who themselves have had to survive police violence directly or their loved ones being murdered by these exact same police. And they themselves now still, even in the wake of losing their loved one, are still facing this harassment and intimidation. So I appreciate you, you making sure that we understand that and we elevate that. At the same time, you know, we're in the midst of a contentious election cycle here in this country, right? And I just want everybody to be clear, like Alex Villanueva was allowed to operate this way towards activists and journalists under Democratic leadership, if I'm not mistaken, because who who oversees or who has... Alex Villanueva was a Democrat himself. Democrat, <laughs> right. Yeah, I swear to God. Yes, and in and, and the LASD is overseen by the Los Angeles, uh, the, the, the Board of Supervisors. Is that right? And mm -hmm. they are, they're all Democrats, right? They're, they're, <laughs> well, we have one, one out of five, but yeah, four are Democrats. Yeah, of course. So look at this, Gary. Look at the democracy that Joe Biden wants you to go out there and fight for, for democratically elected officials to use the resources that is supposed to be for fighting crime. No, they following fucking Richie Sarchenko around. <laughs> Yo, yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> this is the shit. And, so, yo, go ahead. Go ahead. Respond to that, Richie. No, like, okay, so... Um, Joe Biden wants 100,000 more cops on the streets, right? Uh, they're trying to build Cop City in Atlanta. That's a, that's a, uh, they have Democratic mayors and, and Democratic city council. And um, oh, like, regardless, if Trump is president um, and they, it does get turned up, Joe Biden is, is handing over, and the Democratic Party are a whole, whole, handing over tools uh, for them to do uh, hard fascism, right? They're just doing fascism light right now. Um, huh. But, you know, like, yeah, exactly. And then, you know, those cops are coming for us. Those cops, those new cops, those cops are being that are being trained in a, in Cop City, they are coming for people. And why? Why? Why are they preparing for that? What what is coming? What 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 is what is coming? And I and I think that that's something that we all need to contend with. You know, Los Angeles has been really interesting to watch over the past several years because I feel as though in LA, like the plan, whatever the plan is for fascism in the state, you know, to target minority groups or, or, or mar marginalized communities, because we've seen the ways and like we said, the unhoused have been um, viciously targeted by the police. Um, and also the ways in which activists in support of Black lives have been policed and, and terrorized. And then most recently, Richie, if I'm not mistaken, were you at some of these anti-Zionist actions 
uh, uh, were, were you at the one that Biden said something about at the at the synagogue where they were selling off Gaza land or auctioning it off? And then there was a big gathering because I know the anti-Zionist folks, the pro-Palestinian folks um, have been on the receiving end of this violence as well. For sure. And just so everyone knows, I didn't go to that one because I um, had been waiting for I had basically been on probation uh, and I had a diversion term that I completed earlier this month. And um, so uh, my charges from my arrest in 2022 uh, were dropped. And so I wasn't able to go to, uh, you know, actions that would really uh, I mean, I yeah, I, I wasn't able to go to that action, but the Zionists in LA are fucking unhinged. And like they, and you know, they attacked um, outside the synagogue, but also they attacked students at UCLA and they will never be held accountable. And so we're talking about this police, about policing and, and you know, who it's, who it's meant to protect. Um, the person in charge of uh, investigating uh, the incidents at UCLA is a guy named Rick Brazil. I don't know if you've seen anything about this guy. Not, he not is, off the top of my head, but go ahead. He, he is the uh, lead investigator from Uvalde um, that found zero cops liable or complicit in, in what happened there. Uh, so all the cops were able to get off uh, in Uvalde because of this guy named Rick Brazil. So after the Zionist mob attack, I think it's like, you know, a week later, UCLA hires this guy, Rick Brazil, to lead the investigation into the Zionist mob attack. They gave him a new special office called like the Office of Public Safety. And so, oh, you, when you see that happen, you're like, oh, I know, I know what's going to happen. Like, oh, nothing, nothing is actually going to happen mm -hmm. to these Zionist fucking freaks that attacked a bunch of students. And, you know, what kind of investigation is really being led you know, and these students have faced a lot of repression so far. And the, actually a report came out the other day that the UC system plans on um, continuing with the practice of cracking down on protests in encampments. So we're talking about a lot of different issues here, but the main one being that like, yes, the police uh, are are running things here in Los Angeles in a democratic city in a in a democratic state under a Biden presidency, um, and yeah, vote vote blue to stop fascism. <laughs> right, I can't tell the difference. Somehow, fascism is uh, at least when it comes to these political parties, at least the two main political parties. Fascism is colorblind. Fas fascism don't know if it's red. Fascism don't know if it's blue. It happens to be both in, in this country. You know, Rich, you mentioned that you were on probation, which is the reason you weren't at, at that, you know, um, action at, at the synagogue. But I wanted to ask, you know, obviously with you being targeted directly by the state, th their intention, I guess, is to fuck you up <laughs> and, and and or you know chill your speech or or make you cool your heels like they're here to, they're, they're trying to shut you up like if they put you on probation if they put bullshit fucking bogus charges on you uh and, and the whole system is complicit the judge go wrong with the shit prosecutor everybody go along with the shit let's put richie on fucking probation and make it a condition that he can't be here or there um how how does that impact your your activism or, or in or in the ways that it impacts your your activism yeah it kept me away from a lot of a lot of things uh and so my arrests were in july and august of 2022 so it's basically been two years that the city was able to keep me away from city hall and city council meetings like there were specific okay so in my uh in the beginning pre-trial um my main hearing the state uh played this video that uh from kate cagle on spectrum one news that basically like you know documented uh some of the activism and bird dogging and protesting that we had done in the disruptions and the state was using that as evidence to basically say like that i i'm uh, um i'm a danger to elected officials but the the danger is that i annoy them like i bug <laughs> them like that it but and so that's that is the premise of why they're coming after me, like you said. Um, and it what took me away. With? What were you charged with? I'm sorry. 
uh, I got a, I got pre-trial diversion. So, uh, um, but the attempted charges were uh, battery on an officer um, and uh, like uh, removing someone from police custody. Uh, and it was like I was facing six charges. Um, and yeah, it, it was. And there was this recent story that came out about the L.A. city attorney that um the lead prosecutor in the LA city attorney's office um, left her job and filed a legal claim against the city attorney, Heidi Feldstein Soto, because Heidi was picking and choosing who to prosecute based on their political affiliations. And in the story, it says that Heidi was facing pressure at one point to from outside political pressure to prosecute an activist she thinks she saw on video at a protest. And so that is like, that is the, what is happening in the prosecutor's office in Los Angeles. Right. And like you said before, everyone is complicit. Um, and this is, this is just how they operate. It is absolutely how they operate. And, you know, um, just watching again what's been happening in Los Angeles and really from pick a city, you know, Portland, uh, Oregon, <laughs> uh, in New York City, Baltimore, Maryland, and, and LA, uh, the resistance fight is, is pretty clear at this point, right? And who they are targeting the state, the elites, etc. That's also been made pretty clear now. So, I mean, Richie, why don't you just, why don't you just go back and be white, man? Like, you don't have to hang it. <laughs> you don't have to, you don't have to yell at the police. You can just go, just go be white and just live a cool white life. Just chilling, vote Republican and shit. Like, why don't you just go do that? Um, uh, I know the meaning of my life and that I, uh, you know, there are too many, too many, uh, it does it doesn't matter like we're what what else are we going to do right and like there is a, a fight um that is being waged by people right and um we need to come together um and obviously it in like you know being being white we are like if you want to be a good white person and you want to be a race traitor like you need to sacrifice your whiteness and um i don't want to go back to that but it's also been a long time and, and shout out professor ikawabi bunting my uh, uh race and politics professor at compton college when i uh who really uh transformed and uh radicalized me when i was you know 21 years old um when i was in college and uh you know ever since then you know i can't i can't go back and i i know i know the true meaning of uh you know what is happening in this world and you know i can't can't turn that off and, and for any white people listening like you you have to like aggressively go after the systems of white supremacy and that is your duty as a quote unquote good white person as a quote unquote down white person like the you know white people some white people love to be affiliated with non white people but like they're not sacrificed they still won't sacrifice what needs to be done and um I, I hope, you know, but I'm also in a multiracial coalition with people down to burn, burn shit down. And there's lots of us out there um, and just find your people and, and get to work and keep watching burn it down with Kim Brown. I appreciate that so much, Richie, do me a favor, shout out the orgs in LA uh, that, that you are in a community with that you organize with that you mobilize with. So folks here know who to follow and who to check out. Definitely follow People City Council on Twitter and, and uh, Instagram. That's uh, the organizing group that I'm a part of. Um, but also groups like Stop LAPD Spying, Black Lives Matter LA, um, LA Community Action Network. There's a really, um, you know, one 
one good thing uh, in Los, Los Angeles is that although it's wide and spread out, there are people building power uh, all across the city in different pockets of the city. So we have a lot of um, you know mutual aid groups. Um, so groups like LA Street Care, Palms Mutual Aid, um, Fairfax Mutual Aid. There's if you just follow People City Council, we will retweet uh, these groups, go through our following, follow all these local groups. Um, you know, follow reporters like Cerise Castle. Um, there are things happening in LA. Um, and I, I hope that, you know, as we've seen with the student movement, um, you can inspire people like across the country just by showing them how things are done, right? Like how you can potentially do things, actually not, not showing people how things are done, how you can potentially approach actions. Um, and so I think that, I think that LA has a good, good value for that. Like we, there are things happening and they, there are things happening outside of LA too. You know, I don't want to discredit that, but, um, well, you got to rep your city, man. Tell you, yeah, that's course. okay. Big, big, big up where of you course. at. That's okay. Do that. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, and, um, yes. And stay away from some of these left groups from some of these uh, electoral focused left groups that suck radical energy out of uh, the people and the streets and, and uh, you know, want you to uh, go canvas and phone bank for uh, for the Democratic Party. Stop LAPD spying is some folks I would like to speak with as well, because I know that they were also targeted by, I believe, the city of L.A., the, the city attorney that Always. you mentioned. I think sued them because they published photos and information of LAPD officers that was provided to them by the city. <laughs> by like the city attorney. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Watch the what everyone should go to watch the watchers.net. Watch the watchers.net. Stop LAPD spying is one of the most invaluable groups in LA. Probably one of the groups that I like I've learned the most from. Shout out Hamid Khan the OG in LA, um, learned so much from, from them. And they are definitely people that you should have on and talk with. And, um, yeah, people city council is just one small piece of a much larger ecosystem, you know, and I'm, I'm fortunate to just have been a part, being a part of it. Um, and yeah, there's, there's like the city attorney sued them for, uh, publishing photos that they received from the city. Um, and it's just like really fucking corrupt fascist shit. Um, yeah. And it's in the, in it's Keystone cop energy, just like, just like the fucking secret service. Let, let, let the chopper sing on Trump. <laughs> <laughs> when it was when that was supposed to be Trump's beefed up so the Secret Service detail. Uh uh. The, no, it's I'm sorry. Yes. In addition to the malice that the police uh, you know engender, they also are fucking incompetent to boot. For sure. Um, and yeah, I I think everyone watching here, um Google LASD gangs. If you haven't yet, Google LASD gangs. And that's just the the fight that that's been going. I mean, it, to wrap it up here, the LASD just shot a 14 year old kid um, who was a witness to uh, like one of their murders. So uh, a few weeks ago, Cerise had reported it. Um, this 14 year old kid was was shot by East L.A. deputies um, because he had been the last person to see someone who was in custody with LASD and was found dead after that. And so LASD shot a 14 year old witness, uh, and that's just what they do. Right. And, um, that's, that's policing everywhere, you know, in Milwaukee, uh, uh this week, the, the cops shot, uh, unhoused black man, uh, close to the Republican national convention. Um, there's police murders all over the country, and this is just what policing is. Um, and we have to abolish these fucking pigs. Fuck That's right. Pigs. All day, and 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 I appreciate again the the work of everybody that does and and puts in efforts behind um, 
either abolishing the police or making people understand that the police are not here to keep communities safe. They're here to protect property. They are here to make sure that marginalized people know their place. They are here to deny us our constitutional rights, our civil rights. These are not things that apply to everybody out here. And again, the system needs some help to fall down and we need more <laughs> white race traders like Richie Serjenko. Richie, I appreciate you sharing what happened to you with me. Um, I appreciate you also trying to get Cerise on here to join us today, but she wasn't able, but we might try to get Cerise on Text her. another day. I would love to actually have her on Black Liberation Media, but I really hate asking LA people to get up at six o'clock in the morning to do a morning show on the East Coast. So if Cerise is game to come over here on BIDWKB, I'd be happy so happy and to have her because I'm she, she's an amazing journalist like Cerise is the Ida B. Wells like of our time like I don't and I don't say that as hyperbole I don't say that to size her to try I'm not trying to curry favor I'm just telling the truth out here like she she exposed something that has been known the the the, the history of the Los Angeles uh, Sheriff's Department gang she has exposed something that has been known amongst communities of color in LA for generations. And she named it, she researched it, she called it out. Um, and and that, that, that kind of work, ladies and gentlemen, and non-binary people, that shit is not for punks. So we big up Cerise Castle around here. And thank you to Richie Serjenko, of course, People City Council. Richie, we love you around here, man. You're a friend. Anytime you want to come on here and bomb on the cops, you it's, it's say less. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll even leave the screen. Shit, you can go on, dude. Say nah. what the fuck you want to say. It's fine. Nah, thank you, Kim. Just for yeah, like it was that clip uh, that I sent you earlier. That's from three years ago. You know, so thank you for uh, you know just being a friend and then always you know highlighting what's happening here in LA. And um, I'm happy uh to discuss this anytime but yeah Pete, shout out kim for being a real one and uh fuck the pigs thank you thank you richie thank you so much for that i appreciate thank that you, kim. please stay safe out here sir you too thank you all right